Athens emerged as the dominant economic power in Greece around the late 6th century BC. Its power and wealth was further bolstered by the discovery of silver in the neighbouring mountains. Athens was at the centre of an efficient trading system with other Greek city-states. Trade was incredibly important for Athens, as it did not have the agricultural conditions to cultivate enough grain for its population. Athens transitioned through different systems of government as its population grew and became wealthier through maritime trade. This wealth became increasingly concentrated in the hands of a few members of the aristocracy, who were also political leaders, leaving other members of society in debt, sometimes to the point of being forced into debt slavery. Further, there was a perceived lack of consistency among the laws of the city. The first series of laws written to address these inequities was provided by the statesman Draco around 621 BC. But the laws were considered too severe. The penalty for most infractions was death. This is where we get the term draconian. An aristocrat named Solon was called upon to modify and revise these harsh laws. He created a series of laws which equalized political power. Two of the changes for which Solon was responsible were the cancellation of debts and the abolition of debt slavery. He also created the opportunities for some common people to participate in the government of Athens. In doing so, Solon laid the groundwork for democracy in Athens. Pericles led Athens between 461 and 429 BC. He was an incredibly well-liked leader known for encouraging culture, philosophy and science, and for advocating for the common people. Under Pericles, Athens entered its golden age, and great thinkers, writers and artists flourished in the city. Herodotus, the father of history, lived and wrote in Athens. Socrates, the father of philosophy, taught in the marketplace. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, practiced there. The sculpture Fides created his great works for the Pantheon on the Acropolis and the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. Democritus envisioned an atomic universe. Aeschylus, Euripides, Aristophanes, and Sophocles wrote their famous plays. This legacy continued as, later, Plato founded his academy outside the walls of Athens in 385 BC, and even later, Aristotle's Lyceum was founded in the city center. Still, Athenian democracy was limited to its male citizens. Foreigners, enslaved people, and women were excluded from these institutions. Women's roles were largely confined to the private sphere, where they were responsible for raising children and managing the household, including enslaved people if the household could afford them. While women of the upper classes were often literate, most were not likely to receive an education beyond what was needed for the execution of their domestic duties. They required male chaperons to travel in public. Enslaved people, while not involved in political affairs, were integral to the Athenian economy. They cultivated food, worked large construction projects, and labored in mines and quarries. Enslaved people were present in most Athenian households, 
carrying out an array of domestic duties.